Maybe time, let's get stuck into the first item. I've got a bunch of things here, we'll work through them. Alright. Wireless earphones. I thought I'd just try some Bluetooth ones out, see what they're like. I tend to have earphones, I either use them when I'm editing on my computer here, or if I'm in bed watching videos. You know, I have earphones in quite a bit for doing those kinds of tasks, so it's just not disturbing anybody else. And my existing earphones, which are wired ones, um, they're getting towards the end of life. They're okay, but they're, they're not really nice quality. They sound really good, but the wires are starting to go on them, so it's one of these things. So I purchased a few different ones. One already arrived, which showed in the last mailbag, or another mailbag, or maybe future mailbag, I'm not quite sure. I also purchased some Bluetooth ones. So I thought I'd just try a few different ones and see what they come out like. Bluetooth earphones. Goes around your neck. Things stick in your ears. Yeah, guess we'll find out how good they are in time. So don't forget to click like and subscribe if it's your first time here. Check out links down below for any items you might be interested in. Right. These are special plugs. Molex type plugs. See down in there? Maybe you can kind of see it. These are for the Uniden HR2510 2600 President Lincoln kind of radios. There's a guy sending these things on eBay, and I thought, right, that's a nice cheap way of getting power cables because normally these power cables are quite expensive to buy because they're a bit rare, they're harder to get, and so it makes them more expensive. So I thought I'll get some terminals, and next time I need to have cables, I can make some. These also include the dummy plugs for the rear. So this plug here, there is the rear panel ones as well. So those are used for the speaker connections. Don't forget to have a chat down below as well. Just, you know, a chat in the comments to me or other people which watch my videos. Okay, these are some valve extensions. Now I've got these for my motorhome because what I've currently got is like a rubberized hose. Which has been okay, but I put it on there years ago and it's starting to perish a little bit. I know there's some issues with leaking a little bit. So I thought I'd get some brass ones which may or may not do the job. So obviously you just screw this in onto the existing valve and this redirects it. So on a rear wheel set up on a motorhome which is dual wheels, the inner valve will usually face away from you. So you can't get an airline onto it and that sort of stuff. It's like a really tight space. So I'm hoping I can get this on there and still have it accessible. We shall see. I don't know if it will do it or not. I mean, it's, It should kind of stick out that kind of angles it might be right but if it doesn't work then I doesn't, doesn't matter these aren't that expensive to get if it doesn't work there's no real loss yeah could be handy for anyway <laughs> okay funny I mentioned that look what the next thing is these are the replacement ones which I picked up as well so these are similar to what I've already got I think they're actually a little bit shorter because ones I've got a little bit long but it's the same kind of setup. You know, you have this hose which will just bend around. As you can see, this is much more compact, so I'm hoping I could use that. But I might be able to use a combination of both, even. I don't know, we'll see. But uh, it's got like a little ring here which goes into a clip which is just fastened to the front wheel, well, the outer wheel. And so that's held in place, and then that goes onto the inner wheel so you can kind of run it around. We'll see. I mean, yeah, those ones I've put on there have lasted what? five or six years, something like that. That's about long I've had those on there. And I'm just starting to go now, so not too bad really. Oh, perfect. <laughs> when I started recording this video, I was thinking, damn, I need to get my remote control from out the, uh, out the other room. So I purchased another one, thinking I need to get a remote control for both rooms. But I've got my other lamp, where I also do recording sometimes for doing radio work. Now, when I get the time, new remote control has arrived. I bet there's no battery in it though. No, there's no battery in here. Of course not. <laughs> so, you know, I've got a remote. What's this one? These are cheap. This, this thing here is literally a couple of dollars. For the convenience, it's real, real worth it. It's also your fake Canon one. You can buy the original Canon ones, obviously. This is like a wired one. So this can plug into the side of the camera. And you can use this as a remote shutter as well. I'll get one because it's also only a few dollars, so not expensive at all. Yeah, RS sixty E three. New remote control is working nicely. What is this? Eight volt three amp. 
Oh, right, okay. This is the other thing I picked up. It's even got the right plug, and it's even got the right kind of pins on it. Excellent. This is very much like what I'm using right now on my camera, actually. And it's basically an adapter. So you've got a main power adapter here, and you've got this false battery, and this basically goes to the battery compartment of the camera. So then you can run it off mains instead, so you're using batteries all the time. That's what I'm running on this thing right now, I've been using that for a while. But because I've been doing recording it on my other lab there, I've been having to use batteries, it's a bit of a pain. Now, because I have to get changing them and turning the camera on and off and that sort of stuff to preserve them. So I thought, right, if I can get this, get another one of those, put that out there, and I have to worry about it. So I can just unplug the one from here, go into the other room, insert the charger, off I go. Right. I think I know what's in here. I had to wait a long time for this. Now, if you've been following my channel for a while, you remember that I did some repairs to my Fluke 343A, I think it was. And I was trying to clean all the connections on that because it was getting a bit dodgy. I think it was that I was working on. Anyway, this was suggested to me by Ian Johnston. Ian Scott Johnston. On the website, ianscottjohnston.com. He makes the PDVS2 minis and the PDVS2s and stuff like that. Also, a fellow YouTuber. If you're not familiar with him, go and find him because he does some really good videos. He does lots of repairs like I do too. Anyway, he's just this Shield S5. So there's a company locally which sells this. Now, at the time when he just said to me is when I purchased it, like that day, this only just arrived. They had no stock. It took them months to get stock. Incredible. Anyway, it's here now. Patience is a virtue, I suppose. Was it six months or something? Anyway, it's here now. Don't forget to click like and subscribe if you first time here. Right, memory cards. This is back to when I purchased some lower capacity ones, I think. One gigabyte, one gigabyte, and one gigabyte. That's right, one gigabyte memory cards. The reason I purchased low capacity ones, as I said previously when I purchased them and shown you those cards, older equipment may not like large memory cards. Sometimes they don't even like four gigabytes, sometimes that's too much for them. So I've got some one gigabyte cards. Because in those situations, one gigabyte is heaps of space. Sometimes you don't need much space to do what you need to do with them, you know. One gigabyte could, you know, be a use of a data on these things sometimes. A few low capacity cards, future proofing, so when I do get a time when I need to use some of these, I've got them. They're cheap, they're only a gigabyte, they don't cost much at all. Oh, it's got a G Green bag, which is interesting. Hmm, yeah, I've got one of those actually. External USB sound card adapter. This was me thinking about trying to use this for doing video captures on my computer using my LensGo microphone. So I got this thing not too long ago for review, which I used a little bit so far. Not a huge amount, but I've used it. So there's a set there. Now the problem is on my computer, if I want to do live streaming and have a, a microphone for that, this has a audio output, not a USB output. So I need to have an audio input on there. Now my computer does have a jack on the back of the computer, but it's not very good to be honest. And I wanted a USB system. So I picked up one of these to see if it will work. This is basically a jack with a USB plug on it, so it converts the audio to USB, in theory. Um, I guess I'll try it out at some point and see if it actually works, but uh, that's the plan. And being you green, it's actually good quality. There's, there are certain brands which you can kind of trust to be okay. Ugreen is one, Basis is another one. Some chips, what are these ones? LM723CN. I'll stick a data sheet up or something up here so you can have a look and see what they are. I don't know what they are. I must have come across them in something and thought I'd get some just in case I needed them. I honestly don't remember what they are. Check out the data sheet, I'll tell you. Assuming I can find one, of course. Thanks to my Patreon supporters as well who support the channel, all the YouTube members as well. People are financially support my channel, help to pay for things and maybe to buy things from Mailbag and Best Test Kit to Fix, that kind of thing. If you give me a thumbs up on the videos, that helps support the channel. If you share the video, that helps to support the channel. If you subscribe, that helps support the channel too. Okay, so these are just some cables. There's some standard bananas. Now what I was trying to do is build a cable for my Solotron uh, 106. 
71, was it? 1075? 7075. Sonatron 7075. I built a cable for it. I did part of it in a live stream. I actually did build most of the cable, but I didn't have any banana jacks on the end of it. So I actually replaced the socket on it. I 3D printed a housing for the socket and that sort of stuff. And do that in the live stream. I actually designed it and printed it in the live stream and did all the fitment and conversion. And it all went fine. And I was, had a plug for the cable and that sort of stuff. And I've got some wire, but I didn't have any plugs to put on the other end for the banana jacks. So I thought I'd get some of these wires and use these. I don't know what the quality of these is like. They look like nickel coated and stuff like that, so it's probably not ideal for a precision instrument. I reckon it'll do the job. Once I get something built, then I can test it and see if it seems okay or not. If it seems okay, then that's good. I don't have to do anything else. These are relatively cheap. Um, there's five colours there, something like that. Once I've got that built and it seems okay, then I can sell that instrument. I can flick it off. I don't need that one meter anymore. That so I try seven oh seven and five. Don't need it. I've got plenty of precision instruments around here now. That one can go. And I can sell that on Trade Me or something like that. So if you're looking out for one, maybe do a search thing on there. Alright, give a thumbs up, subscribe, catch you later.